Madam Chairman, I, I regret that we don't have the full committee here today um, because the nominations that we have before us, uh, that of Cheryl LaFleur and that of Norman Bay, are critically important. The FERC um, may be that, uh, that committee that, in fact, many people have not heard of until recently, and all of a sudden, FERC is in the news. FERC is the regulatory agency, that independent entity that is charged with making sure that the lights are on here. As we were walking in here this morning and the lights are dim in the hallway, I'm told that because of the, the high heat that we're experiencing here in Washington, D.C., there might be rolling brownouts this afternoon. It gets people's attention. FERC, as an agency, has a huge task in front of it as they confront the issues of, of reliability, of how we move into, into the next generation of, of our elect, electric generation. Um, this is a commission where it takes individuals that know their stuff, that have a level of experience and expertise in this area. I'm, I'm pleased that we were able to ensure that uh, Cheryl LaFleur, who has served on this commission now for the past five years as President Obama's nominee, I'm pleased that her, her name has gone forward. Now, I don't, I, I, I want to make clear here, I don't agree with Cheryl LaFleur on many issues. Um, her agenda is perhaps distinct from mine on, on a lot of different things, um, including FERC's need to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the EPA. But while I might not agree with her on all aspects of, of the issues, I think that she has been fair. I think that she has the temperament and the judgment that she has demonstrated over not only the past five years as commissioner, but but in her more recent role as acting chairman of the commission. Now, it's one thing to be a commissioner. It's another thing to be the chairman of the FERC. It's another thing to set that agenda. It's another thing to lead the policy in these areas. Okay. And so I want to make sure that whoever is chairing the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission knows their stuff. Now, Mr. Fowler indicated earlier that Norman Bay has been sent up by the president as to have a seat on the FERC. But he, the president has made very, very clear that it is, his, it is his intention to place Mr. Bay as chairman of the commission. As chairman of the commission without having served on the commission without having a, a deep background in the policy areas that FERC is charged with regula regulating. Now, he has been part of the enforcement branch. But, Madam Chairman, this is too important to rush, so please, please allow me. When, when we have a situation where we need the best of the best running a commission, it's incumbent on all of us who have this level of oversight to make sure that we're putting the right person there. I think most of us had an opportunity to sit down with Norman Bay. We had him in front of the committee here. He's clearly a learned man. But does he have the experience in the policy, in the energy policy, in the regulatory policies that the FERC deals with on a day-to-day -day basis? Madam Chairman, I haven't been convinced that he has that. But I do understand that he's a smart man and that smart people can learn the ropes, if you will. But I'm not interested in the chairman of the FERC being somebody that is doing on-the-job training, particularly when we have a woman, the only woman on the commission, who has been at the helm as the, acting, as the acting head of this commission, and by all reports from both Democrats and Republicans alike, she's been doing a good job. She has been fair. She has been balanced. She has that, that temperament that we need. She has 
the personal qualities of leadership that I think we look for. She has the experience. So I, I, am, I am willing to look at Norman Bay as a member of the commission, give him the benefit of the doubt that he too can, can learn what needs to be learned on the commission. And then at some point in time down the road, it, it is the president's prerogative as to who sits as the chairman of that commission. Madam Chair. But Madam Chairman, I am not prepared, I am not prepared to allow Mr. Bay's nomination to go forward with this understanding that he will then be placed as chairman of the commission. We all know that we have been trying to work out an accommodation. And I believe that we are very close. I believe that we are very close. But what I haven't received is the assurance from the White House that Cheryl LaFleur will stay as Madam chair, chair of I would the call for a vote. We're going to lose our quorum yes. here. Well, then maybe we aren't going to have a vote today. <laughs> this is too important. And I'm not, I'm not filibustering here to, the, to my friend from New Mexico. If we've chosen to delay this until the end of the hearing, that's, that's what happens. But I think it's important that my colleagues understand that I have been trying very hard to allow for a path forward that allows for those of us who have concerns about Mr. Bay's experience to move to the commission while still giving assurance that we're going to have at the helm of the commission somebody that has the, the experience, the ability to lead a commission at a critical, critical time. And so I've asked for assurance from the White House. I haven't gotten what I need, but I do believe that we can get there if given a little more time. If we, if we move forward to the vote right now, I will be voting against Norman Bay uh, this, after, this morning, and I will urge my colleagues to vote against him as well. But I would like to think that we can come to an accommodation with the White House. It is the White House, it is the President who has that sole discretion, authority to name the chairman. And at this point in time, knowing that the White House intends to place Mr. Bay as the chairman. Would you yield for a question, okay. please? I will not be prepared to, to offer my support this afternoon. Yes. Thank With you. With that, I'm concerned. Senator